just want to come on and say hello, give you a view of where I'm at. I'm at Willard Brook in Ashby, Massachusetts. <clears throat> it's pretty much right on the line between New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Um, my family moved out of Westford, Massachusetts to Ashby, I don't know, probably 30 years ago. And my dad passed away almost two years ago. My mom still lives in Ashby. Um, and I went to visit her today and had breakfast with her. But this is a little park, this Willard State Park, Willard Brook State Park, and it's just a beautiful spot. And I'm just coming down here just to retreat and just get away from it all and just chill and just been praying and hanging out here today. And I just wanted to come on and share a couple things. The, uh, the chaos and the pandemonium continues. Last night in New York, you probably heard on the news already, but three police officers were attacked. Two of them were shot. One was knifed in the neck. It's insane. It's still happening. Um, it's not as bad as it was regarding the looting and all that, I don't think, but it's really sad to see this chaos happening. You know, and hey, I'm against racism as much as the next guy. I hate it. But they're spinning this and they're blowing it up and making it worse than it is. You know, they're desecrating sacred places, military sites, and they're destroying businesses that people have worked their whole lives for. They're beating people, they're mugging people, they're destroying property, and they're getting a free pass. And I saw something that was really, really disturbing. There was a guy from the Black Lives Matter movement, and he came up upon this white woman, and he said, I want you to get down on your knees and ask for forgiveness for white privilege. And the woman did. And it was just so telling of what's going on right now. Guys, we moved out of the massive racism that used to exist in our country a long time ago. There are pockets of it still, and we all hate that. But they're blowing this out of proportion, and they're, they're, it's like they're trying to start a race war. You know, those guys will, justice will be served, I believe. Uh, that police officer and the other three that let it happen. But, you know, you don't hear about the other stuff. That's why I linked that video that Tucker Carlson did the other night to my last video. And I hope you guys go back and watch it because it shows some of the stuff that's happening that the mainstream media is not reporting. And Tucker Carlson did another video last night that showed more of it. And he broke down some of the numbers to put things in perspective here. You know, just last year... Um, in 2019, I think there were, I think it's like around 30 unarmed people were killed by police. 20 of them were white and only 10 were black. And out of those 10, like five or six of them had other weapons and they had a violent history and it was justified. And there was like, I think three of them, one was an accident, they said, and, and three of them are up for debate. But even those... They're not like what happened in Minneapolis. And so more white people were killed by police than blacks. And I think the Washington Post just did something that broke down the numbers even more. That just shows you it's not what they're making this out to be, guys. They're blowing it up. And, you know, most people hate racism. They do. But, you know, the Lord says that the sun shines on the good and evil and he brings rain upon the just and the unjust. Injustice is a bad thing and it happens to all people, not just black people, but white people also. They have these people in these Black Lives Matter rallies and all these, a lot of these protests, they're chanting stuff, you know, against police. They want to defund the police now. You know, if, if they're mom or daughter are being beaten and raped, I think they'd be singing a different tune. They'd be wanting the police there. Most police officers are good people. They serve our country with dignity and respect and they, they're defending the weak. And But our governors and our mayors aren't. They're kowtowing to these people. And they're just fanning the flames of racism. 
We came out of all that heavy racism a long time ago. There are still pockets of it, unfortunately. And we can come against that. And I'm all for protesting peacefully. What happened to George Floyd was horrible. And it should have never happened. But they will, justice will be served, I believe. But it doesn't give people the right to go ballistic and act like animals. But this is what you have with a godless society. And it's just insanity. You know, I was on the White House website page the other day, or the White House YouTube channel, and President Trump made uh, a statement, some pretty strong statements about, you know, he will call in the National Guard if he has to, and he has in some cases, because these governors and mayors aren't getting the job done. And I'm telling you, man, this woman responded to my video and she's like she came out like a bat out of hell and she lumped me in you know at the end of it we went back and forth numerous times and it got pretty heated and you know she was listing all the sins of Trump right and just pointing the finger at him and making him out to be a racist and evil and all this stuff and you know I don't give Trump a pass on some of the stuff he's done in the past he's done a lot of wrong and evil things like all of us have Okay, and this woman like lumped it, lumped him in and me and everyone else who supports our president as being racist and evil and all this stuff, and it was really ridiculous. But at the end of it, you know, I made a last comment. I said, you know, I'm sorry if um, for some of the words I used, because it got a little heated, but she was throwing F-bombs at me. She was cursing at me on the White House YouTube channel dropping F-bombs against me, and I just said, you know, I'm sorry for any words, and I said, I just pray for you, I'm going to pray for your salvation, and that God would bless you, and I, I shared the gospel with her, and she came back with a rant that went on and on and on, and, you know, she lumped me in with TV evangelists, and all this stuff, and it was unbelievable. She called me a cult member because I support Trump. It's it's so hip, hypocritical of people. They, you know, the the people who peacefully protested on these lockdowns, how it's ridiculous and completely blown out of proportion. They were peacefully protesting in Washington, okay, and the media called them Nazis and worse, okay, for peacefully protesting. Uh, you know, that this COVID thing's gone too far, all right? But you don't see the media saying anything about social distancing or anything with all these massive rallies where people are on top of each other, okay? You know, granted, some of them have masks, but they're not social distancing. They don't care because they're selfish people, most of them. Not all of them. There's some legitimate people who are protesting, and that's great. But, you know, they get a free pass in this social distancing thing. You know, what if this coronavirus blows up because of this? Because of all this, you know, massive crowds where people, you know, the rules don't apply to them. It, it's amazing. And the media just fans the flames. And, you know, again, I hate racism, guys. I do. But, you know, there's also black racism also. You want to see that, you know, look at the triple-headed monster of Jesse Jackson, Louis Farrakhan, and the Reverend Al Sharpton. They are race baiters. They make it worse. And I don't know if you guys have ever ran into the black Israelites. You want to talk about racism? They hate white people. All of them. It's unbelievable. So it goes both ways. And, you know, injustice is bad. But it, it doesn't matter the skin color, you know. We're all fallen. And we're all, we all fall short of the glory of God. And we're all capable of wickedness. And the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and without Christ you know all bets are off and so I'm just going to continue to pray for our country but I think I'm going to link another video that Tucker Carlson did last night because he breaks down the numbers and shows how they're they're just blowing this up and it's out of proportion what they're doing and I don't know I'm just really bummed my heart's just heavy but <clears throat> hopefully things will clear up and will normalize at some point. But all this stuff going on, it's just, you know, in, in the midst of this too, there's been kind of a split in the grace community. 
a few brothers disagreed on a few things and it got a little ugly. They were making videos back and forth and you know, I'm praying for, for all the people involved in that, that they'll be able to come back to fellowship with each other. We don't need that kind of division right now. Now, if it's, you know, a false gospel or something that's just way off, then that's one thing. But if it's something that's debatable and um, people see things differently, I, I don't think we need to split over it. But I'm not going to get into that topic because I did a videos on it. I think it was over the whole debate about... Um, eternal conscious torment for the unsaved, for the wicked, versus annihilationism. And I think scripture's clear on it, but I can agree to disagree with people if they can't see it. And it may take time for people to see it. Some people think it's heresy, annihilationism, you know, because it can cause unsaved people not to really want to be saved. Because what are you being saved from? Annihilationism? It doesn't make a lot of sense if you think it through. But I understand that people disagree with it. It's not a pleasant thought. But our perspective is skewed because we're fallen creatures and God is perfectly holy and righteous and he's incapable of being cruel and that whole thing but I don't want to bring that up I might do another video on that just to show some clear scripture on it but people's perspective they think God's you know torturing people it never says in the scripture God tortures people it says people are in torment but they're the ones that put themselves there God doesn't send anyone to hell. People choose their destiny. And God's laid it out for us in his word. And, you know, we can have debates about that. And I wish these people would, would just have a, a civil debate about it. And sharpen each other and, and look at scripture and dig in. Because both sides can't be right, guys. You know, it's one or the other. But I understand it gets very passionate. But I've asked the Lord to show me the truth and to give me a teachable spirit and I encourage others to do that. I'm open to changing my views on things because I don't want to preach something that's wrong. But I I just, it's just really troubling to see. And, I, you know, I think some of them have, you know, forgiven each other. But, you know, I, I encourage you guys to pray. I'm sure you know who it is. I'm not going to name names. But, um, you know, I've benefited from the two people that I know from their ministries. Um, but, you know, we don't need more division. We, we do need division when it comes to people who cause contention and um, they cause divisions and stuff like that. The, the scriptures are clear. They say to mark and avoid them. And a heretic, after the first and second admonition, you're to reject. Um, and some people think annihilationism is heresy. And, you know, I, I tend to agree with that, but I don't think it is a salvific issue in the sense that someone can be a heretic and still be saved. They can have fouled up doctrine, but this one is a little tricky because there are saved believers that I know that believe in um, annihilationism. They call it conditional immortality, but that's just a PC way of saying annihilation. But, I mean, I, I've showed from the scriptures it's clear that the Antichrist is a person. He's the man of sin. And the false prophet is also a person, because prophets are people, they're not angels. And they're in the lake of fire. At the end of the tribulation, the beast and the false prophet, the Antichrist, who are people, are thrown into the lake of fire. And they're in there for a thousand years when Satan is bound in the abyss for a thousand years. Then, at the end of the millennium, Satan is thrown into the lake of fire. And the scriptures are clear. It says where the beast and the false prophet are. And that's a thousand years later. So they don't just burn up. There's a spiritual fire that's real. And that shows that in Exodus too with the burning bush. And it also hints at that with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they're thrown into the fiery furnace. They're kept alive in a flame. And I think that's very interesting. Um, but I don't want to reopen that whole thing. I may do another video, but I'm going to try to get back to some Bible studies and such, but I just wanted to share my heart on this. You know, I grieve with the, the black community um, for people who have been um, treated unjustly and un unfairly because of their skin color. There's no excuse for that, especially in today's day and age when we've learned and we've grown from that. And most people have learned from those mistakes. But the a lot of your far left politicians, you know, they forget history, okay? Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, and he was the guy 
who started destroying slavery and the Republican Party was anti-slavery. It's the Democrats that were the racists and now the Democrats, you know, take up this hobby horse of racism, but they've really hurt the black communities in many ways because a lot of them, they have kowtowed and they have sung their siren song of woe, woe is me and they put them on disability and on Medicaid and Medicare and they're stuck in poverty forever. But when you look at the numbers, President Trump has actually done a ton for the black community. There is less unemployment in the black community now that, than there ever has been. But, but people don't want to see that. They don't like that because Trump is a conservative, he's pro-Christian, he's pro-life, he's pro-Israel, and the Democrats don't like that. And guys, I'm not into the whole Democrat-Republican thing. While I usually side with Republicans' issues because they're, they just tend to be more biblical, but I don't get into politics a lot, and but it really is interesting when you look at it. Um, when you look at the numbers, and you know you have some really good people in our government, like um, Tim Scott. Okay, he's out of South Carolina. He's done so much for the black community. The Opportunity Work Zones he's created, and Trump was all for that and helped beef it up and. It's done great things for people. And I love my black brothers and sisters in Christ and all, all people, you know? And I'm praying for these people in these riots that they would get saved. You know, let's pray for their salvation because without Christ, all bets are off, guys. And a lot of them just don't know any better. And, you know, they're burning churches down. They gave Trump a load of crap because he, he showed a Bible in a video. And I thought it was good because it's a beacon of hope and faith, and that church is a beacon of uh, racial equality, you know, and Martin Luther King was a hero, you know, he would be disgusted at what's going on, so anyway, it's just tough, guys, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts, and, you know, I know it's a tough time, and a lot of people are hurting, and if you guys have any prayer requests, let them be known, and put them in the comments section, we'll pray for you guys. And it won't be just be me praying. It'll be other people reading the comments. Prayer is powerful, guys. And we need each other right now. We really do. I, I, I don't know if this is a judgment of God or if it's just, you know, fallen flesh gone wild. I'm sure Satan's licking his chops right now. But, you know, I just encourage us to continue to pray for our country and to pray for some of these people that they would see the reality and the real numbers. It's not this horrific injustice against black people everywhere. There are little pockets of it here and there, and it needs to be stamped out, and it's good that there is some peaceful protest, but, you know, they're desecrating all these sacred sites, and nothing is off limits for these people, a lot of them, and it's really sad, and it just breaks my heart. But, you know, I saw Sister April, Saved by Grace, did a video the other day, and she was very emotional, you know, and she has a heart for people, and she loves the Lord, and she hates what's going on, and, I, you know, I stand with her. It, it's grievous, and it breaks our heart, you know. That black officer that was killed the other night, uh, David Dorn, he got no attention on the media because he was gunned down and filmed on Facebook Live with no mercy. And, you know, he's a family man. He was a black man who was trying to defend his city, peacefully and he was killed and the media is not covering that because it was done by looters and rioters I don't I don't care if the person who shot him was black or white it doesn't matter wrong is wrong regardless of the color of your skin and that's why I'm not into the whole social gospel thing and this black lives matter thing you know what all lives matter guys it's not just black lives it's all lives and that's why I think it's, you know, a, a critical time right now. It's a make it, break it moment. And I just pray for their salvation, and it's a great time to share the gospel. And even that, I share the gospel with someone, trying to end the conversation with peace and grace and the love of Christ. And I got a mouthful, guys. It's amazing. But regardless, you know, if anyone's listening to this video and hasn't been saved, now's the time. Because the rapture of the church could happen at any moment. Nothing has to happen for the rapture to occur. And Jesus Christ came, God in the flesh, came to this sin-cursed world and 
lived a perfect sinless life and died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he, ro was, he rose again the third day. And by believing that, you're saved. There are no religious hoops you have to jump through. Christianity isn't about being good. It's about recognizing you're a sinner and you need salvation. And Jesus died for you and he loves you. And when you believe the gospel and you put your trust in Jesus Christ as your savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside you. This is what scripture says. And that's when things start to change. You don't change overnight because we still have our fallen flesh. But you're now a new man, and that new man is the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And the Holy Spirit starts to work inside you and starts to help you to overcome sin patterns and such. And no one does it perfectly, but we mature as we grow in Christ. And there is a thing called sanctification, but it's basically in three parts. We are sanctified from the penalty of sin. We are not going to be punished for our sins in the sense of being eternally separated from God in hell, in the lake of fire. Jesus paid that price for you on the cross to rescue you. His blood shed cleanses you from all sin. Because scripture says without the shedding of blood there is no remission. So we're also sanctified from the power of sin. When you learn to reckon yourself dead and you understand that you were crucified with Christ, your old man was reckoned dead. All your sins have been paid for, past, present, and future. So you're sanctified from the power of sin. You learn to reckon yourself alive to Christ, seated in heavenly places as if you already were in heaven. That's how God wants us to live. And none of us does it perfectly. But that's why we have 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's a fellowship verse. And then we're also going to be sanctified from the presence of sin, which is when the rapture occurs and when the resurrection at the same time, we're going to be given glorified bodies and we'll be sanctified from the presence of sin. We'll no longer have a fallen nature. Sin will no longer be an issue for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. And that's what we have to look forward to, guys. We have a great future to look forward to. And God's going to make a new heavens and a new earth. And this whole place is going to be burned up. And I just pray that many people would be saved. And anyone listening to this, it's a simple act of faith. Trusting Jesus died for your sins. It's not about religion, guys. It's not about being good, because there is none good. No, not one. And as you do mature, things get better, but they don't get perfect. You know, it's not about being good. You don't have to repent of sin and clean your life up to get Christ. When you go to the doctor and you get diagnosed and the doctor looks at you, he doesn't tell you to get well before you get there. No, it's after that. And they help you, and that's what Jesus does. But it, it's, you know, it's about our profession of faith, guys. It's believing the gospel. That's what identifies you as a Christian. And people lump everyone in to false Christianity, and it's a shame. The falling away, man, it's, it's grown by leaps and bounds. You know, there is so much apostasy and heresy and false gospels and false teaching. The Bible says that the devil blinds the minds of those who do not believe the gospel. And he doesn't want people to believe that Jesus died for them. And it's as simple as that. By believing he died for you, you're saved. And when you put your trust in Christ to save you, that's it. That's it. You've been transferred out of darkness and you've been translated into the glorious liberty of the sons of God. And you're a child of light now. doesn't mean you're perfect. You still get attacked by the enemy, by your flesh, by the world. We have three enemies. But... Anyway, I just wanted to share the gospel, and I just pray that many would get saved. And Anyway, it's just a beautiful day here on this Thursday. Um, I'm just really enjoying this peace by the river here, this little brook. Um, I can't fish here because I don't have a fishing license in Massachusetts. I might get one, though, because this is a really good uh, trout river. <laughs> but anyway... I hope you guys are all doing well. I love you guys. I'm going to try to get back to doing some Bible study videos. But I just wanted to share some thoughts on what's going on. And, you know, I, I just pray that the Lord would have mercy. And I think 
the only reason our country is still surviving is because there's a remnant here, guys. And the Lord is long-suffering. He wishes none to perish, but all to come to repentance. And repentance unto salvation has to do with what you believe. It's not about your behavior. It's what you believe. Faith is critical. It's very important to the Lord. And the enemy doesn't want people to believe the gospel. And that's why he has his ministers of righteousness preaching false gospels and false religion, works-based religions, whether it's Jehovah's Witnesses or Catholicism or Mormonism or Islam. You know, it's not about religion, guys. It's about Jesus Christ dying for your sins and being forgiven and saved because he loves you. He doesn't want to see you in the lake of fire because that's where Satan's going. And... Anyone not found written in the Lamb's Book of Life is going to be forever in the lake of fire. And that's a horrific reality, guys. When the rich man woke up, he was in hell, in torments. And he had all his faculties, guys. He suffered thirst and fire, and, and it was horrific. And he's still there. And then he'll be, it's like you're, you're put in jail. And then you're sentenced and you're, you're put in prison forever. And he'll go to the lake of fire. And God doesn't want anyone to go there. Because he didn't create that for man. He created it for Satan and the angels. But people bought into the lie of Satan. You won't surely die. You know, God's withholding from you. And Satan's the great manipulator and the liar. And... He's gotten most of the world to rebel against God with him. But God doesn't want to see anyone die without Christ. We all need to be forgiven. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, says the Lord. And truth is exclusive. And it's offensive to some people. But the Lord came here because there was no other way, guys. That's how much he loved us. He... He died a brutal death, a very violent, evil death. And God's wrath was poured out on him on the cross, and he suffered. His soul suffered horrific, but the grave couldn't keep him. And he did that for us. He did that for you because he loves you. And we live in a fallen world, guy, but all creation is waiting for the sons of God to be revealed. That's us. The world doesn't recognize us yet, but one day they will. Because we'll have glorified bodies, guys. And we will rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years here. But then we get to explore a new heaven and a new earth for all eternity, where there is no sin. There is no Satan. There, there will be no more death. It's going to be amazing, guys. That's why the gospel is so wonderful. It's the best news there could ever be in the whole world. And... You know, that's what's keeping me running right now. It's what keeps me going. Because I struggle too, guys. I'm dealing with a lot of different stuff. There's been a lot of spiritual attacks going on lately. I think this division within the body of Christ and the grace community here on YouTube, um, I think Satan's probably fanning the flames of that. I don't blame everything on Satan because our flesh is just as evil as any demon or devil uh, and Satan but you know as, as we mature in Christ we learn to reckon ourselves dead that's just considering all your stuff just crucified and allowing Christ to live through you and asking him to do the heavy lifting you know there is volition involved guys we do have to turn from certain things because we will get chastised because the, the Lord loves us and he doesn't want to see us destroy ourselves or others and sin always has consequences it hurts other people and it hurts ourselves and it hurts the Lord you know when David committed adultery and murder he said I've sinned against you and you alone Lord and you know bad things always happen no one gets away <laughs> with sin you know there's always a price to pay but as a child of God, you're loved, you're forgiven. And it's because the Lord loves us. And he's long-suffering and patient with people. He wants to see people saved. That's why he's tarrying. Because he wants to see other people saved because he loves people. But he's given us free will. And he's given us his word, guys. And his word 
is as sure and real as this river you're looking at, this little brook right here. It's reality. It's not religion, it's reality. And the enemy's doing everything he can to blind the minds of everyone. And he wants people to go off on tangents, whether it's religion or racism or whatever. You know, this pandemic thing, it's... There's a lot of doctors saying that wearing these masks isn't helping. You know, people can get pneumonia and you're breathing your own breath and your temperatures can get really high. It's getting really bizarre. And, and the numbers are skyrocketing, guys. Suicides up, depressions up. Um, drug and alcohol use is way up. And it's really bad. It's, it's actually, I think it's causing more harm. But you know, these riots, there's tons of people and mass gatherings and you know, they get a free pass on this. They could be blowing up this pandemic when they're shutting churches down saying, you guys can't get together, but, you know, you can go out and protest because it's politically correct. You know, and all the do-gooders think, you know, they're all heroes now. You know, you know pe people like Martin Luther King were heroes because they didn't get violent. They did it the right way. You know, and there are some people doing it the right way. And God bless them, and I stand with them. I don't like seeing what happened to George Floyd or any other person. White, black, yellow, or red. Injustice has no color. You know, it's all wrong. But we're all fallen creatures. And this isn't just about black lives. It's about all lives. And for the most part that's only done in pockets in our society it's not everywhere but watching the media you'd think it was and they just they're trying to divide us guys you know they hire people to come in and to do this they've found caches of weapons and bricks and weird stuff's going on this is really weird you know it is spiritual there are dark spirits behind this I'm sure but the, the flesh is just as evil guys and we live in a godless world and it's really just, it's just going to get worse until the Lord comes back. So, you know, Obama mocked people for clinging to guns and religion, you know. And they give Trump crap because he held up a Bible in front of a, a church that represents, you know, not only the church, but racial equality and, and the, the great things that Martin Luther King did. And he gets a, you know, a mouthful for doing that. I, I don't understand it, guys. It's just really sad. But, you know, I'm going to continue to pray for our country and our president, our leaders, our military, our police, our first responders, obviously the family of George Floyd and any other person who's been hurt, especially David Dorn's family. They get no attention. It's just sad. But anyway, I love you guys, and I hope you're all doing well. All right, God bless you.